Eleanor, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Delighted to be here. Um, you're just back from your most recent uh, trip down to Malawi. Yes. Uh, it might be a part of your life that a, a lot of people here might be aware of or familiar with. You're, you're obviously best known for, as, for your wonderful career as a singer and representing Leitrim so well. And as I said earlier, a former Leitrim uh, Person of the Year in 2014. But tell us a little bit about what you do in Malawi and how it all started. Uh, well, it all started back in 2002 when I went to Uganda, and uh, that was my first trip. And I'll never forget, one of the first things I saw there, we went up to the north, to Soroti, to where the Lord's Resistance Army were coming into the villages and kidnapping the children, taking them away into Sudan, and training them as child soldiers so they come back and murder their own people. And I have to say, one of the saddest things I saw was when we were going into a camp, there was a man cycling out on a rickety old bike with a tiny, tiny little coffin on the back of the bicycle. And it was just this horrible image that has stuck with me. But uh, from that I went to Tanzania a few times and uh, Kenya, and this trip was Malawi. So uh, we went, it's a group from Tipperary who set up a charity taking uh, solar energy from Lake Malawi, and they bring water to the tiniest and tiniest of rural villages. They're farming people, you know. They have the best of land, but no water and uh, no education. And that's a big problem. Kind of the opposite of Leitrim, really. It's, you know, we have the worst of land and too much water. <laughs> <laughs> but we are very well educated. Highly uh, educated. <laughs> we, I, I was out in Malawi myself in 2008. Is Playing for Life, is that who you're st still connected with? The no, Tracy, and is, is it a different group? This is actually your old friend Seamus Hayes and yeah. Elizabeth. They set up oh. Sun Energy, and it's a smaller, it's a tiny little charity. The one thing, uh, when I go to Africa, I never get involved with the charity who uh, gives any money to any of the governments because they are just appallingly corrupt. And the only reason those, like Malawi, Malawi is so lush and beautiful, there's absolutely no reason for it to be poor except for corruption. It, it is a stunning part of the world. Yeah. And that, that giving back, that volunteering, has it always been something that's driven you, something that's been part of your life? I know you're, you're generous to a fault in your time in terms of you know, coming along to events like this and singing and making yourself available. So has it, it's always been a big part of your life? <laughs> It is. It's, it's, to me, it's my mission in life. I think it's, it should be all our missions, really, to give back, because we on this side of the planet have everything, if we could see it. We have everything. And over the other side of the planet, they've got really nothing. They have no health, no education, nothing. So it is our duty, as far as I'm concerned. That's why we're here. We are here to support them and give them some kind of a life, you know? And uh, same as here, when we're here, it's our duty to look after our neighbour, to look after people around us, just to say hello, are you okay, to be aware that somebody could be lonely, you know, and not we, and I'm speaking about myself when I say this, we spend so much time by ourselves in our car doing our own thing, um, you know, f focusing on our own lives and we need to get out there a bit more. And, and you're right, I, I was out in 2008 and they, they, they live in destitute poverty, yeah. but they often have some of the greatest joy de vivre and love of life that you'll, you'll ever encounter. And I sometimes wonder, do we, have we lost track a little bit over here in mm. our constant search for material wealth and goods? And what are we actually striving towards? Uh, and have, have, we left the, have we left aside some of the simple things in life? Well, yes, because the kids, and they, they would sing and sing and sing, and the adults would sing. And if you're walking kind of into a field and there's a few kids around, you start singing, they'd all start sing along with you immediately. And there's a bunch, of, a whole bunch of kids in Malawi, on the banks of Lake Malawi, singing lovely Leitrim now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, <laughs> I was teaching them and uh, I kind of thought they'll forget this, you know, and went back the next day and they were all going, la, 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 la. <laughs> and they were trying to get me to teach it to them again. So obviously children with great taste. 
And, and of course, they say charity begins at home, and Leitrim consistently, uh, per head of population, is one of the most generous counties in the country, you know, in terms of donations to charitable causes, Leitrim leads that list. It's, for, for you, Eleanor, what, what does it bring to your life? How, you know, what, what does, how does it make you feel, actually? We're talking about articulating emotions. You know, giving that little something back, whether it's here or on the other side of the world, what does it bring to you as a person? I think anyone would say that to give, it's a much greater feeling to give than receive. And uh, to me, because of the life I, I live as well, it's a very unfocused kind of life and uh, you can get carried away with, it's not every job that you get a round of applause every time you say you do your, your day's work, you know? So you can get carried away with that kind of rot, really. So it's focusing, it's very focusing, it's very grounding, and it brings you back to a sense of reality that we are just, tiny, tiny, tiny little thing in this universe and we need to look after each other and mind each other, you know. There's actually some really interesting research about uh, volunteering and giving and it shows that people who do so, and, and I'm sure everybody in the room here knows this from personal experience, they, they report themselves as being happier people. Uh, and we tend to think that um, material wealth will bring us happiness and again the research actually shows that yes. happiness comes, should come first and it brings you success or it brings you contentment rather than, than the other way around. Uh, the other big facet of your life obviously is the music and that's a, it's a famous way of keeping connected to people as well. Um, in, ter you know, in terms of the theme that we've had here tonight about being connected both to family, friends, community, place, what, how does music play a, a part in your life uh, in, in that aspect? In that aspect, it kind of, I suppose you end up having friends all over the world, really, and all over, everywhere you go, you meet people that come to gigs regularly and they become friends. And the same, I would say, for volunteering. If, if you volunteer with the group, you'll find that you'll find, have a network of friends. And I know some of the groups I've gone away with, there'd be people there who would probably have very, very few friends. And they sign up not to go to volunteer to do anything altruistic or anything else, but to meet people. And we all end up contacting each other all the time in emails and WhatsApp and all the various. And so you have, it's a, a great old camaraderie, you know? And, uh, yeah. Because well, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm having the tune in my head, but I love music. But sport has always been my way of connecting with people, or a great way of connecting people with me. And I, I think a, a lot of people in, in the audience as well, I, I see a lot of familiar faces from, from the GA, but whatever, it doesn't have to be sport, it doesn't have to be music, whatever you, your thing, as Alan was saying earlier, if you can find something that brings you out and connects you with those around you, you you'll reap the benefits from it. Absolutely, and you don't have to go to Africa to volunteer, like I'm just looking around the room, you've got Simon, you've got Samaritans, there's so many groups. There, in this day and age when homelessness is at an all-time high, there are so many people looking for our help, and it really, really is a fantastic way to connect. And uh, I actually just want to mention one woman that I met in Malawi, uh, if you don't mind indulging me. It's a woman, to me, she's the ultimate volunteer and probably the most extraordinary human being I've ever met. And it's a woman called Mags Reardon from Dingle. And uh, Mags had a son, Billy, and he was on his holidays in, in Malawi, and he rang her from Malawi and said, Mammy, this is the most beautiful place in the whole world. You have to come over. And 48 hours later, Mags got called to say that her son had drowned in Lake Malawi. But prior to that, she'd had two children, one who was in the back of a car and the car went off a pier and was drowned. A second child, she was driving along and was asleep in the back of the car, so she thought it was a caught death. So this is a woman who lost three of her children. She has two other daughters. And she gave up everything and herself and her husband moved to Malawi to set up a clinic and they treat hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of patients in this clinic in a place called Monkey Bay with the poorest of the poor. And they have, they work tires, tirelessly morning, noon and night for these people. And that's her healing. She's, they are healing through that, through, through giving, giving, giving. Extraordinary people. Uh, and I think we... Absolutely. I, I think people who have come through things like that, when, when you look at somebody going through an experience like that from the outside, you wonder how on earth 
did they ever get through that? But there, there's a depth of resilience to, to, to people and a well of resilience in us that I think we, we underestimate and we don't often tap into until it is we, we need it at its most. And I definitely think the people who suffer the most teach us the most. Thank you.